So what we have learned so far, multi-armed bandits are a simplification of the real problem. Uh, they have actions and rewards, but no input or sequentiality. So they are reinforcement learning problems in the sense that we are considering the concept of action, performing some action, and the concept of reward. And we need to, to discover which action will uh, lead you to the largest uh, amount of cumulative reward. But in the bandit problem, we don't have any input. So by input, we mean uh, we don't perceive any change in the machine. Uh, every time you pull a lever, nothing, nothing visually changes in the system. So you can, for example, if the machine would change color, for example, or uh, turn on a light, then you can try. You can try to start uh, connecting these changes in the in the machine with with the reward that you are getting. But in in this typical machine, the machine doesn't change after executing actions. It just answers you with some reward. So we don't have any inputs that we that we can consider as part of the uh, of the problem. Let's say the bandit machine, uh, the bandit uh, machine problem has only one state. The machine doesn't change; is the the same. It's always in the same state. In the real reinforcement learning problem, we have many states. Okay. And also, since uh, we don't have many states, we have only one. There is no concept of sequentiality. In the real reinforcement learning problem, since we can move from one state to another, then it is important to consider that uh, after executing a sequence of actions, you can have a reward or not. So it is a more challenging problem than, than the basic bandit problem. Uh, a fundamental exploitation exploration trade-off arises in bandits. So this is also an uh, important part, always, in reinforcement learning problems. Here we, are, uh, we have studied the epsilon greedy action selection, which is the simplest way and by far is the, the, the most uh, preferred action, uh, action selection strategy. Learning action values is a key part of solution methods. So a large amount of reinforcement learning algorithms, I'm talking about the state of the art uh, reinforcement learning algorithms, estimates the values of, of the actions. Okay. You will see later uh, some uh, variations of, of this, but many of them consider uh, the estimation of actions. And uh, this 10-arm uh, testbed illustrates uh, many, if not all, because as I said, this input and this sequence idea is not considered. Uh, it contains many of the of the many of the main uh, elements of the reinforcement learning problem. So, to better understand this uh, bandit problem, uh, here is an experiment with a 10-armed ten, ten uh, bandit problem. In this experiment, first we need to create the, this machine with 10 actions. And the way we create this machine is the following. We need to define a function for each of the actions like in this case, we are talking about 10 actions. Okay, here we have the actions. And for each of these actions, we need to define a probability distribution that will be used by the machine to generate rewards. And one 
simple way to define these functions is using a normal distribution with some mean and some variance and to create this machine what we will do first is to generate uh, what is going to be the mean of the rewards for each of these 10 actions okay so here um, this is uh, depicted here a normal distribution and the thickness of this great area uh, represents the probability so the, the largest probability will be in uh, the mean value for that Gaussian or normal distribution so first we need to generate those means here you can see these means as these straight lines here is for the action 2 here for action 4 and so on and we can generate that using an, a normal distribution with mean 0 and with variance 1 okay so you would need to implement a, a, a function that will call the normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1 and the function will give you a number following this uh, distribution probability okay so in this case uh, this is an example of some values that were given by calling this uh, function and these values are used for defining uh, the probability distribution of the rewards like for example consider action 1 the reward function for action 1 will be defined also as a normal distribution and the mean of that uh, normal distribution will be the number that was generated initially as the mean like this this straight line so every time you execute action 1 you will call this function here which is a normal distribution with mean this number here that maybe it is I don't know 0.2 for example okay and this is uh, the the distribution this is the, the expected probability of the number so with some probability this function when you call this function it will return you one maybe it can give you two or 1.8 whatever it is uh, to be generated according to this distribution so each of the actions will have a normal distribution and the only difference is the mean so in this case you will this action 2 will give you more numbers around minus 1 which are not very good rewards but for example action 3 in this case will give you rewards around maybe 2.5 okay so in this case uh, the best action the optimal action will be 3 so if we knew before playing that action 3 is the best one we, s we could simply play action 3 because it's the one that is going to maximize the reward but of course we, we don't know that this part is just like uh, creating the machine and then we we will play with this machine this is part of, of uh, this experiment in the experiment once you have created uh, a machine like this you will play 1000 times with this machine so this is a run for 1000 steps it means you will select using epsilon greedy 1000 actions you you will play 1000 times with this machine okay and every time you play the machine you play an action you will get a reward and you will be keeping track of this reward for uh, 1000 times okay after you have done that you will repeat the process starting from creating a new machine calling this function again so you will generate different distributions once you have created a different machine you will play with it 
1,000 times and you will do the same. You will keep track of every reward that you will get. If you do that, this is something uh, that you will notice. So in this x-axis, we have the number of plays, the number of times that we executed actions. Okay. If you run the first experiment and you plot the rewards that you get, you will get simply a, a line. Okay. If you repeat that experiment, as I explained before, uh, 2,000 times, and you average by position, you will get a plot like this. In this case, we are plotting this experiment with different epsilons. These epsilons are the epsilons in epsilon greedy. It's the amount of exploration. So in this uh, curve with black, in black color, uh, this was generated with an exploration uh, rate of 10%, so point, point 0.1. With probability point 0.1, the action selected was a random action. And with 1 minus point 0.1, so with point 0.9 probability, the action selected was the greedy action at that moment. The red curve was performed with 0 0.01 of exploration, so only 1% of the times uh, a random action was selected. And the green curve is with zero exploration, only greedy. So as you can see, changing the exploration amount has an impact in the rewards that you get. This is the average reward. As I said, this is the average over 2,000 experiments. And each of these uh, 2,000 experiments consisted in first creating a machine and then playing with this machine 1,000 times. And as you were playing with this, you were uh, storing the rewards and then you compute the average over 2,000 uh, experiments. Here, down in this plot, what it is plotted is the percentage of times that the optimal action happened to be selected. So as I said, when you create the machine, just by checking the means that you generated, you can right away see which action is the optimal one. So for this machine, the optimal action is number three. So during the experiment, of course, you you suppose that you don't know you don't know this information about the machine. It is hidden to you. But you know, of course, in each of the experiments, which action is the best one. So what they did in, for this plot is every time an action was selected, they say, OK, in this first machine, our optimal action is action three was this action selected in this uh, step, in this uh, play, yes or no? And they simply counted how many times out of these 2,000 experiments the optimal action was selected in that machine. And as you can see here, if you follow the Epsilon Greedy uh, strategy, as you increase the number of plays, you start gaining information about which action is the one that is giving you more rewards or lar larger rewards. And as a consequence of that knowledge, of that exploration, you start exploding the information and you increase the number of times that you select the optimal action. And you can see here the difference if you use epsilon 0.1 or epsilon 0.01 with less exploration it will take you more time to discover the optimal action if we can plot this for many more uh, steps you will see that this curve will approach very slowly the the curve here with 0.1 
So that's why in, in when, when we are doing uh, reinforcement learning research, we need to plot these kinds of curves with different epsilons so we can see uh, how fast our algorithm is, is learning, is discovering the, the greedy action, the, the optimal action. So one more thing to learn from this bandit problem is that learning as an average is a fundamental learning rule. Okay, it's this average idea appears a lot of times in many of the algorithms, uh, reinforcement learning algorithms.